to execute the first woman in 70 years. Let run orders issued. Hi, I'm Samantha Ruff. And I'm Hannah Schutzkis, and this is Public Eye News. The Mackinac Bridge has recently reopened after it was closed at 10 a.m. this morning. The closing was due to low visibility and an accident. The bridge will remain closed until the weather conditions and visibility improve. Officials say that blowing snow is moving east and that is what kept the bridge closed for several hours. Developer Home Renewal Systems is looking to redevelop the vacant orphanage property here in Marquette. The developer is looking to create 55 affordable housing apartments and anticipate the total cost to be around $15 million. They are in the process of negotiating terms of sale with the owners. The project is expected to be completed in early 2017. With these cold days sticking around lately, we're bound to see warmth coming to our area soon. Come Wednesday, Marquette may not reach above zero degrees, and Thursday will also be cold, but we can expect to see some sunshine. Before the freezing temps came, the Great Lakes weren't going to reach the ice coverage that they had last year. Currently, Lake Superior is close to 95% covered in ice. In the past, it has been rare for Lake Superior to freeze over for two consecutive years. In other cold weather news, multiple communities in Marquette County and across the UP have been issued a let run order to help prevent freezing pipes. Gwynn, Austin, New Swansea, Princeton, and Forsyth have been issued the notices in Marquette County. Eli Township, Palmer, and Iron River have also been issued the let run order. Officials are asking to run the water at a pencil width on a faucet. Water bills will be adjusted based on a monthly average as the let run will continue until further notice. Insurance company Nationwide Mutual Fire Insurance is trying to reclaim their money after claiming they didn't know about a medical marijuana nursery in the basement of a house in Bay City that caught fire earlier this year. The company paid over $130,000 after the fire, but did not know the owner was growing marijuana in the home. They sued to recover the money, claiming it was undisclosed practice that violated the insurance policy. A federal appeals court upheld the decision on Tuesday. A review of public documents shows that millions of 911 calls made on cell phones across the U.S. do not give dispatchers enough information on the location of the call. The documents show that cell phone calls only show where the nearest cell tower is, and to receive a specific location, dispatchers must submit a separate digital request. New federal rules are in consideration and would require cell phone carriers to transmit 80% of users' locations data by 2021. And after the break, we'll have your international and national news. Stay tuned. Some of the best singer-songwriters of our time, from both sides of the pond, coming together for the sake of the music. Alison Krauss, Jerry Douglas, Bela Fleck, Mary Chapin Carpenter, James Taylor, Eric Bibb, and more. Set against the gorgeous backdrop of Scotland. Transatlantic Sessions, the best of folk. Join us Saturday evening at 7 Eastern. And welcome back. Forecasts are predicting that Detroit's general fund revenues will go above $1 billion for each of the next two fiscal years. Mayor Mike Dugan will be presenting the plan today to the City Council for approval. The Review Commission will ensure that Detroit meets post-bankruptcy requirements for 2015. The two-year budget was created by Kevin Orr, the former emergency manager. A four-year budget plan will be given to the Review Commission next month. Congress has until Friday to pass a bill funding the Department of Homeland Security or risk shutting down. Susan McGinnis reports from Washington. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell took a shot at trying to break the stalemate. Democrats blocked consideration of a bill funding the Department of Homeland Security for the fourth time Monday. The bill is tied to provisions that would repeal President Obama's executive actions, which temporarily shield millions of undocumented immigrants from deportation. But Democrats oppose the repeal. McConnell now plans to separate the issues and introduce a standalone bill this week that that would block the president's orders on immigration. It's another way to get the Senate unstuck from a Democratic filibuster and move the debate forward. Some Senate Democrats have already expressed support for debating the two issues individually. People have really strong opinions about both topics and they both should be debated fairly, openly and separately. 
But many Republicans remain opposed to doing so and point to a ruling by a Texas judge last week blocking the White House plans. It's time for Democrats to stop defending the president and the White House. Should the deadline arrive without a deal, 30,000 workers could be furloughed. Many more could be expected to show up to work without pay. These are folks who, if they don't have a paycheck, are not going to be able to spend that money in your states. Funding for the department would be cut off at midnight Friday if Congress fails to act. Susan McGinnis, CBS News, Washington. Georgia is executing a woman for the first time in 70 years. Kelly Renee Gissendainer was convicted in 1997 after conspiring with friend Gregory Owen to kill her husband in Atlanta because she was afraid he would not leave her alone if she simply divorced him. Gissendainer asked her cellmate to find a third person who would falsely confess to taking her to the crime scene at gunpoint. According to the Attorney General, she has exhausted all state and federal appeals and will be the first woman executed in the state since 1945. For her last meal, she requested two Burger King Whoppers, two large fries, popcorn, cornbread, salad, and lemonade. Owen is serving life in prison for his role in the murder. Your tax dollars are helping pay for more than 100 commercial airline flights a day to some of the nation's smallest communities. It's part of the Essential Air Service program, and Chris Van Cleve has more details from Devil's Lake. Row after row of seats on this 50-seat commercial flight are empty. It leaves Denver twice daily for two remote North Dakota towns. On the day we landed in Devil's Lake, there were only four other passengers. You can imagine there's not a huge rush to get to North Dakota in the middle of the winter, but this flight goes whether it's full or empty because of a government subsidy. The Department of Transportation shells out more than $6 million a year to fund this route. It's one of 113 paid for by the federal government's Essential Air Service Program. It was created in 1978 after the airlines were deregulated. The idea was to make sure carriers continued serving rural communities. It was supposed to be temporary, but instead it's grown from $50 million in 2000 to $261 million this year. And government data shows on average 44 routes flew at least two-thirds empty last year, among them the flight to Devil's Lake. Mark Zimmer flew with us. How much time does it save you in your um, travels? Probably about two hours each way. Parking is a lot easier here. Mayor Dick Johnson estimates the airline service helps drive $10 million a year to the local economy. It helps drive that economic engine that keeps us viable. Without that, we're, we're just going to die off and fade away. California Congressman Tom McClintock has been trying to ground the Essential Air Service program since 2011. When we were having to make cuts in essential programs to, to continue increasing the amount of money we're putting into this program is simply obscene. A flight between Kansas City, Missouri and Great Bend, Kansas carried just 523 people during a 12-month period ending in November, costing the government more than $2,700 per passenger. Chris Van Cleve, CBS News, Devil's Lake, North Dakota. Shane Austin, a man who was arrested in connection to the kidnapping and killing of Holly Bobo, has committed suicide. Bobo disappeared in April of 2011 when her remains were found in Decatur County, Tennessee. Jason Wayne Autry and Zachary Adams were also arrested in connection and charged with aggravated kidnapping and first-degree murder. Austin was granted immunity in March of 2014, but the state tried to void the deal to indict him. The top security official in Germany has met with the Jewish leaders and attempts to reassure them of safety. Although threats against the Jewish community are high in Germany, authorities are doing whatever it takes to provide protection. This talk comes after a deadly attack that occurred in Copenhagen, Denmark, and other situations. If any information about possible threats are given, authorities will take action to protect them. And after the break, we'll have your weather and sports. Stay tuned. Coming up on Austin City Limits. I'm sitting here stuck, plastered to my seat. I think I'm waiting to leave. When you finally stop speaking. No champagne does it every time. Tune in Saturday night at 11. And welcome back to Public Eye News. I'm Floyd Smith here with your local weather. Let's take a look at your current conditions. 
Currently, it is cloudy with a temperature of 26 degrees and winds are going west northwest at 20 miles per hour. And the barometric pressure sits at 29.37 inches and steady. Tonight, it will also be cloudy with a low of negative 10 and winds going north northwest at 15 miles per hour. And tomorrow will be snow showers with a high of 3 and winds going north northwest at 10 miles per hour. Let's take a look around the UP. Currently in Sault Ste. Marie, it is 21 and cloudy. In Manistique, it is also cloudy and 26. In Escanaba, it is 27. In Menominee, it is 28. Iron Mountain, it is 27. Iron Wood, 19. Houghton, 15. And back here in Marquette, it is 26 and cloudy. Let's take a look ahead. Thursday, there will be snow flurries with a high of 10, a low of negative 7. Friday, there will be a high of 14, a low of 0, and mostly sunny. And Saturday, there will be a high of 20, a low of 10, and mostly sunny. So, Dan, you have a story about one of our own enemy hockey players becoming player of the week? I do. Our buddy Reed Seckle. He's coming in big for us this year. Really? Northern Michigan University Reed Seckel has been named the Western Collegiate Hockey Association Offensive Player of the Week following his performance during the Wildcats series sweep of number 8 Bowling Green this past weekend. Seckel recorded three points in NMU's 4-3 win on Saturday. He assisted on the first goal of the night for the Wildcats, then scored the equalizer and game winner as NMU scored three unanswered goals in the third period to complete the sweep. Seckel's efforts on Saturday marked a season high in both points and goals. The Wildcats will return home to host Lake Superior State in a WCHA series Friday and Saturday at the Barry Event Center. Puck drops at 7.07 p.m. After a hard loss at the hands of the Anaheim Ducks last night, the Detroit Red Wings will look for a win tonight against a strong LA Kings team. When asked about the loss last night, Nicholas Cromwell said, quote, We have to be able to keep our composure better than that. We cannot get too content with our lead. End quote. The Wings are surely missing Heinrich Zetterberg after he suffered a possible head injury against the Dallas Stars. The Kings, who are currently on a seven-game winning streak, look as if they can't be stopped. Jonas Gustafsson will be the one minding the net tonight against the Kings, earning his first start since November 5th. The Wings have won the last four meetings with the Kings since Pavel Datsuk and Gustav Nyquist, each scoring two goals and earning an assist in their last meeting in October. Puck drops tonight at the Staples Center at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And Kansas State Athletic Director John Curry is apologizing today for the unruly court storming incident last night at the Bremlage Coliseum, where a sea of students and fans flooded the Coliseum's floor after the school's 70-63 to victory against the 8th-ranked Kansas Jayhawks. Kansas coach Bill Self found himself crushed near the scorer's table after the game and needed Kansas State counterpart Bruce Weber to help him escape the jubilant madness. After the game, he said, quote, It's a ball game. It's not, a chicken it's not about chicken winging someone when the game's over. It's fine if you celebrate when you beat us, but at least it shouldn't put anybody at risk, end quote. The NCAA does not have a specific policy against court storming, and in a statement, Curry admitted that the security staff didn't have enough time to get into place to stop the post-game madness. Now, Sam, the Kansas security staff had a hard time stopping all those students last night. I hear the NYPD right now is trying to stop some crooks with crowbars. They sure are. After ATMs have been getting ripped off, the NYPD are looking for a gang of crooks who could be tied to it. The thieves have stolen 73 total ATMs, including one in Midtown Manhattan, which is right around the corner from the police station. The crooks are using crowbars and various tools to take the doors off of the machines. There is something messy about a floating strip club, and now Alaskan authorities are charging for it. Human waste from the floating strip club is being piped into the Kodiak Harbor. The club is on a 94-foot crabbing boat called the Wild Alaskan. The owners say they will comply with regulations regarding the disposal of waste. Sounds like the gentleman at that club might have to tip a little more. It sounds like he just might have to at this rate. But that's all the time we have for you today at Public Eye News. Stay tuned for tomorrow's show. The preceding program was produced in studios located in the Edgar L. Hardin Learning Resources Center by WNMU-TV, Northern Michigan University Public Television.